In order to align the rendered animation with the drone footage, we will need to reverse engineer the chosen frames into Lumion cameras. Good news, the photo matching effect does just that, but there's a trick to getting the cameras over to the movie studio. So stick with me to the end and I promise you will learn something new. I know I did, let's get to it. Okay, so inside of Lumion, let's trash this camera that we set up because we really don't need that right now. Get rid of that and then we're going to set up our photo match. All right, so I'll click on the effects button to add our photo matching effect. We'll click to add that. And then we'll click on the edit button to edit this photo match effect. All right, basically you wanna work from top to bottom. First thing we're gonna do is click on this load photo to get rid of this kind of placeholder photo. In my desktop temp folder in my class files folder, I've got like this JPEG titled 22. And this is a frame export uh, from our drone footage. All right, so I'll open that. And that was at 22 seconds. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our, uh, our photo imported and we're going to now place a reference point. All right, so we'll click place reference point. And basically, you know, I've always said whenever I'm doing any sort of photo matching, it's kind of like at the front bottom corner is where you want to place your reference point. There's no right or wrong answer necessarily. Sometimes you'll get better, uh, better results in different areas, but typically it's like the front bottom corner closest to you is a good first try. So that's what I've done. I've dragged my reference point there. And then what we're going to do is drag the reference point in our preview window here to the same position in the photo, all right? Now, if that's getting a little bit like muddy here because I've got like this model overlaid on a photograph, come over here and knock down the transparency. And that way you don't really have to think too hard about what, <laughs> what the orientation of that model is. And now we can get to working with our axes bars, all right? So what I'll do is just kind of like bring our, our red X axes bars up here we're gonna run those kind of uh, left to right. And so I'll bring this other guy over here and I'm just picking like, you know, you wanna find parallel elements in the photograph that you can line these up. Um, I don't know, do you remember like in architecture school when you would like use your, you know, blow up a photograph and then uh, tape it to your desk and use your T-square to project those uh, vanishing points? That's essentially what we're doing here. All right, so there is one vanishing or one axis bar set up. Maybe I'll even go back here. Uh, it's okay to over, you know, kind of overshoot as well. That's okay. And we'll drag this guy over here like that. And then we'll drag this one over here like that. All right, so that looks pretty good. And yeah, everything's in pretty good shape. I mean, you know, you can kind of tweak these around. And what we want to do now is turn our model back on. So this is where you like bring your transparency back up and then you can kind of like get a feel for like, you know, what is the orientation here? So maybe first thing I would do is bring my scale down just so it's at a similar scale. And I can see that this really just needs to rotate 90 degrees, all right? So I'll click this left arrow, spin it 90 degrees and just mess with my transparency here. Ah, yeah, see, that's doing pretty good. I think I nailed that one. All right, so I'm gonna hold shift and I can drag that scale and kind of bring it back up. And then, you know, again, you can kind of mess with your transparency back and forth. And then the other thing you can do, like for instance, like look at, you know, you can see where, let me see here, our photograph, the end of that like darker form uh, in our model, it's kind of needs to like shoot back. So here's what I found is if you hold shift, you can, you can get a more um, finite uh, adjustment and you can start to work these things and try and get it to go the direction you want it to go. Again, you can hold shift when you're scaling and you can continue to kind of work these back and forth and get a little bit better result, all right? And then you always just say, okay. And sometimes it is a good idea to say, okay, uh, because if you were to like cancel that, you'd lose all those little adjustments. And then you can always go back in. We're in pretty good shape there. Um, and here's something that's really important is that the photo matching effect is actually controlling the camera location. 
And in order for us to recall this camera location, once we get into movie mode, we need to snapshot or store this camera. So I can tell you that I've already like really tweaked and, and refined these photo matching. So if I just back out of here, I can go to these three little dots and load the effects. So you can see here that I have this 22 underscore photo match settings. I'll click open and see how it just adjusts it just a little bit. Let's go take a look at that. I'll click on the effect and then click edit. And from here, you can just kind of tweak with that transparency back and forth. You know, that's how I really get a, a feel for like, is, am I lined up or not? So that looks pretty good. I'll say, okay. So let's do this again for the next frame. All right, so then what I would do there is maybe go to my next camera and scoot over here to the other side. Not totally necessary, but just kind of gives you an idea of what we're gonna do. I'll click on add effect. We'll go to photo matching, and then I will edit the photo. All right, so again, we're gonna work from top to bottom here. We'll click on load photo to get rid of this generic photo. We're gonna go with uh, this frame 41 or the uh, frame from the 41 second mark. And then we're going to place our reference point. So I'll click place reference point. We can back out of here, orbit around a little bit. And like I said before, usually the best reference point is at the front bottom corner of the building, uh, front bottom corner nearest to you, like that. So that's where I would place my reference point. And then whenever things are getting like really messy on my screen, um, you know, it's good just to knock that transparency down. And then we're gonna drag this reference point back down there. Not even gonna worry about what that looks like yet. We're gonna get our axes bars kind of lined up. So I'll drag these up to get them lined up with parallel elements on my building. Uh, the X are gonna go in, headed front to back like this. And then our blue uh, is gonna go left to right like this. And we'll just kind of get close, as close as we can, like that. All right, so that's pretty decent, right? Let's see how that's working out. We'll bring our transparency back up. I can already tell that our scale's way out of whack. So let's just bring that scale down, something kind of close. And, you know, I am pretty familiar with this project, although I'm a little thrown off here. So sometimes it's best just to hit the minus 90 there it is, yeah, it was just one 90 degree turn. And then we can hold shift and adjust our scale like this. And then, like I said, you work between transparency back and forth like that. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you hold shift, you can get those minor adjustments and kind of tweak these like that. Remember, whenever you're messing around with these match, uh, these photo matching effect and all these settings, it's a good idea to just click okay, because that like locks them in. Uh, if you tap escape, I believe it backs you out there and it backs you out of there. That can be frustrating when you've made a lot of little adjustments. So make sure you say okay. And then you can always hop back in if you need to and then continue working on it. But just like we did before, I can tell you that uh, if we kind of go back one level there, we can load an effect and load our effect list from our 41 photo match settings like that. All right, so now if I take a look at this, we can edit it and just kind of work our transparency back and forth. And you can see that I've really spent some time uh, tweaking all of those settings and those are looking pretty good. So we'll say, okay. And so now remember that the photo matching effect is controlling the location of my camera. So in order to recall this camera, once we get over into our movie mode, I need to snapshot that and store that camera. Otherwise, uh, we're not going to be able to recall it. All right, so we have our two different cameras. We have, uh, what is that, frame 22 and frame 41. All right, so now what we're going to do is hop over into our movie mode. All right, like there. And then let's start uh, a new recording. And I will hold the shift key and press one. Shift one recalls camera position one. So now what I can do is add that keyframe, hold shift, press two, there's camera position two. I can add a keyframe. 
Now, the length of this clip, remember we, we selected like frames that were like an even number apart or a clean number apart. You don't have to, but it sure is handy when you can just kind of edit this number and make it a clean 19 seconds. Also, you know, our ease in and our ease out needs to be linear because otherwise uh, we would kind of not be on, on track with our drone footage. So I'll save that and go back and click play. And so now we're going from our first frame to our second frame at a very consistent rate. And this should work out pretty well. So what we'll do now is render this clip out. I'm gonna click on render clip and then we're gonna save this at a draft quality with no anti-aliasing, anti 30 frames per second, and definitely full HD. This should render really quick. We're gonna send this to my desktop temp in our class files. Um, you know, I'll just put this in my, my temp folder and I'm gonna call this uh, 230102 and I'll say uh, this is gonna be uh, Ivy Street Draft, like that. All right, so let's render. Perfect. Okay, I'll click the OK button. And now let's head over into DaVinci Resolve. All right, so inside of DaVinci Resolve, I can right click in the media pool and choose import media. I'm gonna import from my desktop temp folder. And here's that draft rendering that we just created. All right, so we will not change our frame rate. And you know what, I'm also going to import another clip because from our class files, we wanna pull in this kind of uh, raw drone footage, right? So we'll bring that in. Now on the edit tab is where I like to work inside of DaVinci Resolve. We're going to start to composite these clips, uh, start stacking them. So on the bottom will be our drone footage like this. And so you can see that now we have our timeline playing and as we get over here, I'll pause this for just a moment. And I'm gonna double click on our uh, timer here and type in 2200 enter. All right, so that's at 22 seconds and there I can add a marker like that. Now, when I drag in my draft rendering, we can just position that and let it, you know, we want it to snap so I can turn on my snapping like that, and we can kind of snap it right to our marker. I'll turn the snapping off so now we can kind of like scrub across here, and you can see how this is gonna work as it changes like that. So we have our blue screen that we'll need to kind of get out of there. All right, so to get rid of our blue screen, and this is some pretty advanced stuff inside of DaVinci Resolve, but uh, this one little trick is not too terribly difficult. We'll head over to the color tab and we're going to start with our picker, our qualifier, I guess they call it. So we'll uh, activate that and then select this blue. And then we're going to right click and we're going to add an alpha output. And then we're gonna drag the node over here like that. All right, that's getting close. And then we're going to swap the mask like this and then we're going to need to kind of add some more blue to that. So maybe I'll click that plus sign and grab that like darker blue as well. And then we can also go in here and you know, you can start to like mess with like the in out ratio like that. Um, that looks pretty decent. And you know, if I like kind of zoom in here as well and I push down on that scroll wheel, you can start to see like around the edges. And that's what I was talking about like with um, you know, when this is, um, when, when you have these little artifacts left over, uh, we can get rid of some of those, like the blur radius kind of helps with that, you know, like that. And as I zoom out, you know, we're not going to get like too terribly intricate here. That looks pretty good. I, I, what I'm more concerned about, you know, at this stage is, um, you know, whether the timing is right. So like, as I go through here, you know, like that that looks pretty decent. And then as we get to the other side, you know, you can see that it's like pretty much blocking out that entire existing house. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's see, I think we're in, we're, in, we're in decent shape here. I can go back into like my edit mode and then just kind of like 
hit play. And you know, let's see this thing kind of go through. I'll go from, from here like that. So as we're coming across, uh, we will then see it's going to like transition to that. So it's a little bit harsh right now. So let's add in a transition. So if I go to my effects and then we can go like with an additive dissolve right there and drop that in and then see what that looks like. You know, so now as we come in, it's not gonna be such like a hard cut, you know, right into that, that rendered building. But I can tell you that we got a few things going on. Let me add another additive dissolve to the end of this uh, like that. I missed my click and we'll add it in there like that. All right, so as we come across here, let me just give some commentary. So like as we're coming across and our model fades in, you know, what we've got going on here is like, you know, the shadow on our blue screen was a little bit darker. And that gets a little bit tricky, and I'm sure that you could be more clever with your keen. But what I wanna do is get some landscape in there. All right, so as we go along, I think that our, our landscape is gonna help out with this gentleman on the, um, on the lift there. And then as we get over to the right, you know, again, like this tree, it'd be nice if we had like some Lumion trees uh, to kind of block out and, and kind of help soften the transition between, you know, our rendered model and the drone footage. All right. And then also on top of that, you know, so we're going to need some landscape, uh, some effects, and definitely some materials. But I'd say we're in really good shape here. The mechanics are in place, but I know Lumion can make a much more polished image, so I'm not done yet. Follow me to the next tutorial, and I'll show you how to whip this scene into shape with objects, materials, and effects in no time at all. I'll see you in there.